All right, so welcome to our new unit on statistics. Our first lesson is called posing a statistical question. So our focus today is going to be on formulating a statistical question and explain what data could be collected to answer the question. So we have this word that we might not be familiar with, statistical question and data. There are two focus. Today we're learning what is statistical question, but this word data we should already know. That's just when we collect numbers that show information. So there are numbers that show info. So really that's all statistics is looking at. Gathering data and then using it for graphs, charts, anything else that we can show something. Okay, statistics is about using data to answer questions. In this unit, the following four steps will summarize your work with data. So that word summarize means we're going to use it every single time we have a statistics problem. We're going to use step one, step two, step three, step four. Step one is pose a question that can be answered by data. So think, can my question be answered by numbers? Yes or no. Step two, determine a plan to collect the data. Well, I've asked my question, now I have to get that information. Step three is I summarize the data with graphs and numerical summaries. Notice my base word in numerical. My base word is number or numeral. So I know it's going to have to have a number summary. Step four is answer the question posed in step one using the data and the summaries. So for example, if I ask the question, how many people have red as their favorite color? I need to make sure I go back and then answer that question. I don't just want to collect the data and forget the question. Okay, you will be guided through this process as you study these lessons. The first lesson is about just this first step today. What is a statistical question and what does it mean that a question can be answered by data? That's all we're working on today is step one. Okay, Oscar, a seventh grade at Vaughn Middle School, is a huge baseball fan. He loves to collect baseball cards. He has cards of current players and of players from past baseball seasons. Oscar brought his baseball card collection to school. Each card has a picture of a current or past Major League Baseball player, along with information about the player. When he placed his cards out for other students to see, they asked Oscar all sorts of questions. Some of the questions that he heard was, how many cards does Oscar have altogether? What is the typical cost of a card in Oscar's collection? And where did Oscar get the cards? So here we have a picture of a baseball card. They normally have a picture of the person on the front, and then all this information or data on the back. So which of these questions do you think might be a statistical question? And what do you think I mean when I say a statistical question? Well, we haven't even talked about what a statistical question is, but I'm already asking you, what do you think? So remember, going back to this very first step, it has to be answered by data. So what do you think? Which of these might be a statistical question? Well, my definition is, a statistical question is one that can be answered with data and for which it is anticipated or expected that the data collected to answer the question will vary. So that means I'm not asking a question where I only get one answer. I have to be able to ask a question that I get more than one possible response. So that is what I mean by a statistical question. And my answer are these two. What is the typical cost of a card in Oscar's collection and where did he get these cards? Why would this one not be a statistical question? Well, it's because it's going to have the same answer no matter what. He has 55 cards. Or he had 57 cards. It's not going to change. It's a set number. So my answer has to be varying or changing. Okay, let's look at these. Which of the following questions would have data that varies? How tall is your sixth grade math teacher? What is your hand span? So how far is it from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your small finger? Well, my answer is actually neither one. This one is going to stay the same, 5 feet 11 inches. This one is going to stay the same also. It's not varying. It's not changing. Now look at these bottom two. Which of these questions would have the most variability? So I'm telling you right here, my answers are going to be varying. They can change, 
But I'm looking for which one has the biggest possible change or range in those numbers. First is number of minutes students in your class spend getting ready for school. Number of pockets on the clothes of students in your class. Which one do you think would have the biggest change in numbers? Well, it's going to be this first one. The reason why is it might take some people five minutes to get ready, mostly my boys. But for some people, like the girls, it could take them as long as 60 minutes or more to get ready. So here I'm going all the way from 5 to 60. Now the number of pockets to close on students in your class, that could be anywhere from 0 to, it might be 20 if we count all your pants pockets, your shirt pockets, your pockets on your jacket. But there's only a variability of 20 here. Well here there's a variability of 55. So it's actually a really big range. Okay, let's look at these ones. For each of the following, determine whether or not the question is a statistical question. Give a reason for your answer. A. Who is my favorite movie star? Well, that one is not because it's not collecting data that varies. Your favorite movie star might be Johnny Depp, and that's it. Because it's asking for my. It's not asking for everyone's. It's just asking for one person's. Let's look at this one. What are the favorite colors of sixth graders in my school? Well, right now I know it might be different because it's asking for this plurality. It's asking for more than one for more than one person. So here my answers could change. One person could say red. The other person could say blue. The other person could say black. So there's that variability. How many years have students in my school's band or orchestra played an instrument? Well, this one also can change. Somebody could have played for just one year. Somebody could have played for four years. So there's a change that can answer in those questions. What is the favorite subject of sixth graders at your school? Again, this one can change because someone might like a different subject. You could get math, or you could get English, or you could get Spanish. There's a whole bunch of change that could answer. Okay, how many brothers and sisters does my best friend have? Well, this one doesn't have any variability because we're asking for just one person, and that one person is only going to have one answer. So my best friend has one brother and one sister. There's no change. If you ask me that tomorrow, he'll still have one brother and one sister. Okay, this one's a little bit different. Explain why each of the following questions is not a statistical question. So why is it not a statistics question? How old am I? Well, my answer doesn't vary. I'm only 17 years old. And if you ask me why, I'm still 17 years old. Or you might say, well, I'm only 21 years old. That number's not changing. Okay, what's my favorite color? Well, again, here we're focusing on just one person, like we did up here. So that number is not going to change, or my color is not going to change. You only have one favorite color. There's no wishy-washy of, well, I like blue and I like purple. There's only one possible answer. Okay, how old is the principal at your school? Again, this one's focusing on a single person. If it's a single person, you're not getting data that varies. The principal has just one age at the time I ask. My data's not changing again. This movie will help answer today's question. What is a statistical question? So I have asked your own classmates some questions and together we will decide if the questions are going to be statistical questions. So after each question I ask, we're going to have to ask ourselves two questions. Is there a population stated of who I am asking? And what about the variability? Are there more than two answers? So the first question I asked was, do you like music? Let's see their answers. Do you like to listen to music? Yeah. Do you like to listen to music? Yes. Are you ready? Do you like music? Yeah. Do you like to listen to music? Yeah. Looks lovely, Bobby. Do you like to listen to music? No. Okay, so now it's time when we ask ourselves the two questions. 
Is there a population stated of who I am asking? Yes or no. What about the variability? Are there more than two answers? Yes or no. if this question will be a statistical question. How many letters are in my last name? Yes, how many letters are in my last name? I don't know. Five? How many letters are in my last name? Five. How many letters are in my last name? Five. How many letters are in my last name? Five. How many letters are in my last name? Five. Okay, so let's ask ourselves the two questions. Is there a population stated of who I am asking? What about the variability? Are there more than two answers? of sleep do you get? Can you predict if these answers will vary? Yes, they will. Let's see. How many hours of sleep do you get a night? How many hours of sleep do you get a night? Thirteen. Yes, those answers did vary. Let's check out what are the sixth graders' favorite food in the school cafeteria. What is, your, what is your favorite food in the cafeteria? My favorite food in the cafeteria will have to be pizza, and I wish they still the hot sauce thing because I would put tons of it on it. What is your favorite food in the cafeteria? Fresh fruit, like apples and pears and oranges and bananas and... Anything else? What is your favorite no. food in the cafeteria? Hot dogs. <laughs> uh, sometimes pizza. Tacos. Skelly. Bananas. Bananas. Tacos. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, they dodged that one. So we have to ask ourselves those two questions. Is there a population stated of who I am asking? Yes or no? What about the variability? Are there more than two answers? Yes or no? Okay, let's wrap this up. What is a statistical question? So it's a question that must have a population stated, and that question must have answers that vary. So it has to be more than two answers. Therefore, that the data will be varied. Thanks for watching. Now you know. All right, here's our next problem. Aureli, a seventh grader, wanted to find out if she lived, there's a typo, if she lived the farthest from school. Write a statistical question that would help Aureli find the answer. Well, this question is not. If I just say, do I live the farthest from school? Because again, I'm focusing on just one person with that I. So how can I change it so that I'm getting a range of data? Well, I can change it by asking not just I, but seeking out more than one. I can say, what is a typical distance from home to school for students in my class? 
or I can say, how far does each student live from school? Both would be acceptable answers. Because this each, I'm focusing on more than one. So here, my next part is write a statistical question that can be answered by collecting data from students in your class. So it's not focusing on this problem up here. I want you to think any statistical question. What could we ask our students? Here's one possible answer. What is the typical number of pets owned by students in my class? Here's another one. How many hours each day does a typical student in my class play video games? See if you can write your own statistical question. All right, my last one on this page is change the following question to make a statistical question. How old is my third grade teacher? Well, again, here's our problem. We're focusing on a single person, my third grade. You only had one third grade teacher. So how can we change this to a statistical question? Well, I need to make it so I'm focusing on more than one. So I can say, what is the typical age of teachers in my school? Or if I want to just stick with just this third grade example, I can say, what is the typical age of third grade teachers? Either way, I'm now focusing on more than one. So my data can vary. It can be different for one answer to the next. OK, here's our next part, types of data. We use two types of data to answer statistical questions. Numerical data and categorical data. If we record the age of 25 baseball cards, we would have numerical data. Each value in a numerical data set is a number. So look at this. Numerical data, number. How can I remember that? Well, I should see that my base word is numeral, which is related to number. Okay, my next part is this. If we recorded the team of the featured player for 25 cards, you would have catechal data. Although you still have 25 data values, the data values are not numbers. So here, categorical, what word do I recognize? Well, I should recognize this category. So if my data is collected as categories, so for example, with these baseballs, I'm not getting, for this part, the team featured. That's not a number. That's going to be like the Orioles or the San Francisco Giants, or the A's. It's not a number. I'm still going to have 25 data values. It's just they're not numbers. They're going to be those team names. All right, what are other examples of categorical data? Can you think of your own examples? Here's some. Eye color. Not everyone has the same eye color. The month in which you were born. January, February, March, those aren't numbers. The number that may be used to identify your classroom are examples of categorical data. So think of this one. This one's a little bit different. Identify your classroom. Well, my classroom is A3. Mr. Kelly's is A4. Ms. Berrigan's is A6. Why are these categoricals? I see a number here. I see a 3. I see a 4. Why are they categorical? Well, it's because they're not just numbers. These are also what? These are also letters. So it's making it not just numbers. So I'm putting them in categories because of that letter. Now, what are some other examples of numerical data? How can I collect data that only will be numbers? Here's some examples. Height, how tall people are. My number of pets that everyone has in the class. The minutes to get to school are all examples of numerical data. They're all going to be reported as numbers. Okay, here's our next one. Identify each of the following data sets as categorical or numerical. Heights of 26 graders. Well, that's going to be what? Numerical, because those numbers can change. The favorite flavor of ice cream for each of the 10 fifth graders. Well, that's categorical. Chocolate, vanilla, mint, those are not numbers. Hours of sleep on a school night. Well, that is numerical. You sleep five hours. You sleep nine hours. Those are all numbers. Type of beverage drink at lunch. 
categorical, Pepsi, Coke, Mountain Dew, milk. Those aren't numbers, those are categories. Eye color, categories, brown, blue, green. Number of pencils in each desk. That is numerical because it's asking for that number. Okay, here's our next one. For each of the following statistical questions, students ask Oscar to identify whether the data are numerical or categorical. Explain your answer and list four possible data values. So here it's asking to say whether it's numerical or categorical. That's one part. Explain your answer. That's two. And then it says list four, four possible data values. So let's look at this first one. How old are the cards in the collection? Well, that is going to be numerical because I'm ex anticipating or expecting that it will be a number. How old is going to be five years, seven years. So here's some possible data points. Two, two and a half, 20, 40. So let's check, make sure I did all this. Did I say whether it's numerical or categorical? Yes. Did I explain my answer? Yes, I expected it to be a number. And then list four. Yes, one, two, three, four. Try this next one. How much do the cards in the collection cost? Well, again, this one's going to be numerical because I'm expecting a number. And here are four possible values, 20 cents, $2, $10, 75, and 35. So let's check again. Did I answer all parts? Numerical, check. Explanation, check. I anticipate it to be a number. And then four possible values. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's look at this next one. Where did you get the cards? This one is categorical. Why? Because I'm expecting a store. Categorical. And I'm expecting it to be the name of a store or place. So that's my explanation. Where did you get them? I got them from my friend. That's not a number. So that's going to be that name of a place or a category. Then four possible examples. Let's see. Store, garage, brother, friend. So there's my four. So notice how there's only one question right here, but there's still those three parts that's asked me to answer. Okay, here's my lesson summary. A statistical question is one that can be answered by collecting data that varies. Well, what does this vary means? Well, I'm using that text feature that I have, these parentheses, and that's giving me the definition here of vary. It's explaining. Not all of my data values are the same. There are two types of data, numerical and categorical. In a numerical data set, every value in the set is a number. Okay, let's repeat that. Numerical data is a number. Categorical data are non-numerical values, such as names, colors, labels, etc. What's my base word again? In categorical, well, it is category. And that's if I can squeeze it all on here. Yeah, it is category. Statistics is about using data to answer questions. In this unit, so not all of today, because we're going to be working on it later, this unit, the following four steps will summarize your work with data. Pose a question that can be answered by data. Determine a plan to collect the data. Summarize the data with graphs and numerical summaries. Answer the question posed in step one to answer the data. So what did we do today? All we did was focus on this. Pose a question that can be answered by data. Okay, here's your exit ticket. Okay, now that you are done, what you're going to do is you're going to go on Dreambox. And you're going to do that for the rest of the day. All right, good job, guys.